Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Mr. Avery Dunn, for the opportunity to share what I feel the Lord has given me to share with everyone this morning. First of all, let us start out with prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for waking us up this morning. Thank you for all that you have done and are doing in our lives. Thank you for Jesus Christ dying on the cross for all of our sins. Thank you that Jesus made a way where there was no way for us to be saved through his death, the burial, and the resurrection. Um, thank you so much for the Bible that helps us to learn how to live. Lord, we pray for everyone today as we go about our way. Help us to focus on you and you alone. Lord, we just ask not our will, but thy will be done. Here we are, Lord, your servants, willing and ready to serve in any way you see fit. And we just want to give you all the honor and the glory and the praise for everything that we do. And we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. First of all, this morning, I feel like that I should uh, share a poem with you. The title of the poem is The Teacup. But for today, I believe the title should be The Fiery Furnace for Today. A couple used to go to England to shop in a beautiful antique store. Their last trip was their 25th wedding anniversary. They both liked antiques and pottery, especially teacups. They were spotting an exceptional cup, and they asked, May we see that one? We've never seen a cup quite so beautiful. The lady handed it to them, and suddenly the teacup spoke. You don't understand, it said. I have not always been a teacup. There was a time when I was just a lump of red clay. My master took me and he rolled me and pounded and patted me over and over again. And I yelled out, don't do that. I don't like it. Let me alone. But he only smiled and he gently said, not yet. Then wham, I was placed on a spinning wheel and suddenly I was spun around and around and around. Stop it. I'm getting so dizzy. I'm going to be sick, I screamed. But the master only nodded and said quietly, Not yet. He spun me and he poked me and prodded me and he bent me out of shape to suit himself. And then he put me in the oven. I never felt such heat I yelled and I knocked and I pounded at that door. Help me. Get me out of here. I could see him through the opening and I could read his lips as he shook his head from side to side. Not yet. When I thought I couldn't bear it another minute, the door opened. He carefully took me out and he put me on the shelf and I began to cool. Oh, that felt so good. Oh, this is much better, I thought. But after I had cooled, he picked me up and he brushed me and he painted me all over. The fumes were horrible. I thought that I would gag. Oh, please stop it, stop it, I cried. He shook his head and he said, not yet. Then suddenly he put me back in the oven. Only it was like, not like the first one. This was twice as hot and I just knew I was going to suffocate. I begged and I pleaded and I screamed and I cried. I was so convinced I would never make it. I was ready to give up. Just then the door opened and he took me out again. He placed me on the shelf where I could cool, and I waited, and I waited, wondering, what's he going to do to me next? An hour later, he handed a mirror, and he said, Look at yourself. And I did. And I said, That's not me. That couldn't be me. It is beautiful. I am beautiful. Quietly he spoke. I want you to remember, he said, I know it hurt to be rolled and pounded and patted, but had I just left you alone, 
you would have dried up. I know it made you dizzy to spin round and round on that wheel, but if I had stopped, you would have crumbled. I know that it hurt when it was hot and disagreeable in the oven, but if I hadn't put you there, you would have cracked. I know the fumes were bad when I brushed and painted you all over, but if I hadn't done that, you never would have been finished. You would not have any color in your life. If I hadn't put you back in that second oven, you wouldn't have survived long because the finish would not have held. Now, you are a finished product. Now, you are what I had in mind when I first began with you. The moral of this story is, God knows what he's doing with each and every one of us. He is the potter, and we are his clay. He will mold us and make us and expose us to just enough pressures of just the right kind that we may be made into that flawless piece of work to fulfill his good, pleasing, and perfect will. So when life seems hard and you're getting pounded and patted and pushed almost beyond endurance, when the world begins to be spinning out of control, when you feel like you're in a fiery furnace of trials, when life seems to stink, try this. Brew a cup of your favorite tea in your prettiest teacup. Sit down and think of this story, and then have a little talk with the potter by Dot Richardson. And now I would like to share another poem that I have. I hope you'll enjoy both of these. One, This one is Directions to Our Father's House. Make a right onto Believeth Boulevard. Keep straight and go through the green light, which is Jesus Christ. From there, you must go and turn onto Bridge of Faith, which is over troubled waters. When you get off the bridge, make a right and keep straight. You are on the King's Highway. That's heaven bound. Keep going for three miles. One for the Father, one for the Son, and one for the Holy Spirit. Exit off onto Grace Boulevard. From there, make a right turn onto Gospel Lane. Keep straight and then make another right onto Prayer Road. As you travel on your way, Yield not to the traffic on Temptation Avenue. Also, avoid Sin Street because it's a dead end. Pass up Envy Drive and Hate Avenue. And also, pass up Hypocrisy Road, Gossiping Lane, and Backbiting Boulevard. However, you must go down Long Suffering Lane, Persecution Street, and Trials and Tribulations Avenue. But that's all right, because your victory road is straight ahead. May God bless each and every one of you, and I hope you've enjoyed these inspirations and have a blessed week. Thank you. Jesus, oh Jesus.
Jesus.